one second, please. All, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Okay. Thank you. Hey, Margie, you get to join remotely. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. A moment for personal commitment. If someone wants to lead us in a pledge or other. Okay. Right over here. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have a quorum. Thank you. Um, has anyone, everyone had a chance to review the agenda? I'll motion to approve it. All right, um, all in favor of approving the agenda? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? All right. All right. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from previous meetings? Yes. Yes. All right. Everyone, uh, I'll motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. All right. Everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Everyone opposed? Everyone abstaining? Okay. Um, all right. Departmental presentations. Today we have uh, James Nicholas from the counseling department and Theoni uh, from our math department. Uh, Theoni, do you want to go first? Okay, good. Is the video going? I don't know. I'll send you a lot of work, so let me know. All right, so I am Ms. Marvel and I am the department chair for mathematics. Um, on the next slide, you're going to see um, my department right here. There's a, about three, um, and the next slide um, has a little bit about our course team leads. Uh, this is Morgan Brower, who is the team lead coordinator at the uh, our freshman campus. He also leads our algebra team. In Integrated Math 2, we have Ms. Lunen at the varsity campus and Mr. Um, at the TFA. In our advanced algebra trig, we have Ms. Rosales. And in pre calculus, we have Ms. Strick. And while she's on maternity leave, um, Mr. Diaz is in charge. So this is our team of our, our teachers that sit um, usually uh, at least weekly and meet and collaborate together to align our curriculum and try to make it the best we can here at TAF. Um, all right, so what are our goals? Obviously, in math, we want to create the most positive math experience for all of our students, and we want to make sure we're doing that with the appropriate rigor. Uh, we encourage all our students to reason, communicate, and think critically in efforts to prepare them to be lifelong problem solvers. Um, our goal is to grow our elective options, and we have done so. We'll talk about that a little bit um, later. Um, and of course, our main goal is to have uh, all of our students leave Taft High School with taking four years of math, although the requirement is only three. We really push for that fourth year, and we have pushed so that there's access for all of them. It doesn't have to be just AP classes. We have students that are leaving our school with um, college credit um, and prerequisites that help them in college. Our continued efforts uh, and attention to the uh, diversity in our curriculum. And we're very excited with our mentor teachers. We have a great partnership with Loyola uh, University and DePaul University, where we take in a lot of student teachers, student observers, and work with them 
and we've actually hired many um, of those teachers throughout the years. And of course, it to continue to work and strong in our curriculum. Here is one of our standard track um, sequences. So the student coming into our school, um, as we traditionally know, they come in at the algebra level. They take uh, Integrated Math 2, which is our geometry course here, Advanced Algebra Trig. Um, and so what we really push for at fourth year is the student to fall into an AP statistics course, a pre-calculus course, that can also be a dual credit class, probability and statistics, or transitional math, which is this beautiful new class that we've developed in the past couple of years that gives students actual prerequisites. Um, so when they go to college, they don't have to take their prerequisite test. They fall into the correct math class. So despite of they don't have to do a college entrance exam, they go into the math that they should be as a freshman in college. Um, here's the more accelerated track. So most of our students, um, in the past couple of years, we've actually seen a nice um, increase in students coming in that have already taken algebra. Um, so the very bottom track is where we're seeing a lot more of our students coming in. And so that really opens up the window for them to take a lot more AP classes. They can actually leave our school taking either AP Calc, AP Stats, um, IB Math. Um, and we also even created a track at the very top portion if the student comes in with algebra, we infused a class called Advanced Geo Trig. So the student's getting their geometry credit, but also learning trig at the same time, and then is able to take more advanced classes in the last two years. Um, so we're really proud of that. Um, I think the next slide talks about um, some of the opportunities. So I was talking about the CCC class. That class is really geared for a student who's deciding to go to college, but maybe math is not their strong uh, suit. But when they take that CC class here, um, they, as long as they pass the course, uh, they don't have to take a college entrance exam for math, and then they fall into the right math class. Our uh, DC is, you know, the the uh, diploma and the, I'm sorry, the dual credit, uh, which we've seen a great increase throughout the years. AP and IP courses. Uh, we have the math team that we're doing pretty good at, and Math Kangaroo, which is an international competition that we actually host here at TAB, which is great. Um, and then another nice opportunity for students, the kids that maybe don't have algebra coming into um, our school, we have a you know, freshman summer of algebra course where they spend uh, two, three weeks with uh, our algebra teachers and they, they learn the algebra prior to jumping into TAF. Some of our celebrations. So I've been at TAF for 17 years. And when I first started here, there was one AP stats class, one AP calc class, dual credit never existed, and CCC math was not a thing. Um, and as the years went on, we saw an increase of the classes. And just from last year to this year, which is super wonderful, we had 15 of those higher level classes. Kids just thought they couldn't take it because they couldn't take it, but they could. Um, and we, we have pushed as many kids as we could that uh, were willing to, to set you know, their minds to take on that fourth class. And we went from 15 courses last year to 24 courses this year. So it's, it's really nice to see that. Um, some of my other celebrations here from our department. Over the summer, uh, we got some great results from the algebra exit exam. Uh, the seventh and eighth grade graders that went to TAF far exceeded the district uh, expectations. 100% of our eighth graders passed the algebra exit exam, and 75% oh, of them passed. And I believe the uh, city averages in the low 60s. So while we see that our academic center and our teachers are phenomenal. Um, and so another thing to brag about is our IB classes. In the past five years, we exceeded the global average in IB, and those are the years that we did it. And it's just uh, super proud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that was, that's me. Thank you very much. Yeah. It can be quick. All right. So, my name is Richard Nicholas. Jim Nicholas. I am the counseling overture, I guess. Um, what you call it? This is our team. We have 11 counselors, one um, college and career coach, 
And I didn't put your names because nobody knew about one. Nobody was. You recognize your counselor, they're up there. All right. So we basically follow what's called the Ask a Model American School Counselor Association. And in a nutshell, what all that says is we look at students academically, social, emotionally, and post secondary. So we're looking to see what's best fit for them here to get them to the best fit when we leave. That's what all that says. All right, so our goals um, kind of adjust this yearly. Um, right now, what we're looking at is for students to see counselors at least six times a year. And we've had to be creative in doing that. Um, right now, what's working well is we go into a lot of classes throughout the school year. So students see counselors, not necessarily their counselor, but a counselor. They can always be directed to their own if they need to specifically talk to them during lunch before school, after school. Um, but six times what we look for. Um, we are uh, also want to emphasize tar targeting tier two groups. Um, I said tier one at the top. That is basically um, when we try to get everybody in the school. And then tier two are like groups that we want to run. So we try to target them early, do some kind of surveys and things to see who needs what kind of services support. There's also a, um, a questionnaire that students fill out and go into rooms and have them fill out. So we kind of get some groups going as early as we possibly can. Um, another emphasis is to try and get a nice four-year continuum through graduation, a combination of things that they need for graduation, a combination of things that students want to take, and then we're looking for some good opportunities for when they leave. Um, that's just kind of like a breakdown of our tier supports. We kind of look at it as the bottom is everybody in the school, a little more narrower focus, focus for the tier two groups, and then our individual counseling would be at the top. And we kind of organized with the Freshman Academy and here in two groups. So we've got our freshman counselors, three counselors over there, and we have all our um, varsity counselors here. And we pretty much follow students throughout. So for example, after they leave Freshman Academy, they'll come here. We all get a bunch of 10th graders, and we follow them through 11th grade and 12th grade. And um, you know, every year we just get a new bunch of 10th graders and just kind of like move through. In addition, we also follow certain grade levels. We split up the counselors. So for example, myself, Nicholas, I go into 10th grade chemistry classes and I go into 11th grade um, INS classes, social studies classes, and we deliver lessons to students that way. So everyone has, is broken down on various levels that they do. And that works pretty good for us so far. Doing this now for a couple of years. Um, some examples of what we do when we go to those classes. I've got 30 dozen up there. Um, introduce to high school, some career interests, college searching. We do learn plan succeed, FAFSA, things about my uh, money, how to pay for school, filling out college applications. It goes on and on, but that's just a quick sampling of things that we do in our workshops throughout the school. Um, some things we do for the community, we do FAFSA workshops for families, parent conferences, we have college and career night, we do college visits, field trips, um, we have a mental health awareness night coming up, um, freshman sophomore connection over the summer. Um, for the future, I know they had celebration before, but I'm like, everyone's celebrating things. These are some of the things we would like to see in the future. I'm always tweaking this and doing wish lists, but definitely for years I can't stand the way our web page looks on the TAP website, so I would love to see that like, into the 21st century. It looks, looks quite dated. Um, like to see less changes in the future for students, so if they see one culture, they see that same culture for three years, that would be really nice. I think now that we've kind of like leveled off population-wise, that's going to happen now as we kept increasing students. It was not an even flow, but I think that's going to happen now as well. Um, what else did I put up here? Some wishes. A more effective way of seeing students right now, you kind of have to like, I don't there's not, it's very difficult sometimes to see a student that we want to talk to right away, short of us leaving our office and going to a room or contacting a teacher via G chat. Sometimes they're busy, so I don't know, we're trying to think of a way to make that easier. 
maybe a separate career fair from college fair might be nice. Have a council or something would be nice. Um, yeah, that's good. Is that fast enough? <laughs> Before before they go, I just want to say real quick, uh, as far as I'll just brag on Fiona a little bit. She's being humble here. Um, Fiona is always the one that's helping us after school with a lot of things. If you've ever seen her in the concession stand, she's always there for all the games. And so I just want to say, say thank you. And also for being open minded when we're pushing these harder classes. Fiona is always like, Let, let's do it. Let's do it. Also, Mr. Nicholas over here, you know, we started the hallway sweeps um, about three weeks ago. And the second tier of the hallway sweeps is that the counselors meet with the students that had more than 18 tardies in one week. And all the counselors took, I think, 13 or 15 of them, which was an additional burden. But Mr. Nicholas in the department said we can do that, and no problem at all. And lastly, I'm going to give a kudo out to Mr. Flores. He's been kind of the visionary the last, since I've been here nine years, that have, that have said, and I keep calling them educational vegetables, but he's the one that comes up with the courses and talks to the department chairs and gets our kids into these rigorous classes, which we keep telling the kids, it's not all GPA in college. They're looking at the rigor that you took in your classes. So it's Mr. Uh, Flores' uh, vision, along with Ms. Greenblatt, and again, Mr. Kuzma was here, and, and Mr. Blowitz, and, and everybody. So we can have a round of applause for all of them. Thank you, guys. Come on, get them going. All right, we could go down the road without help. I'm looking at seminar teachers. Yeah, so many people yeah. that really super much help the counselors a lot in the most recent years. I mean, they would do a great job. Yeah, and he had mentioned FAFSA. Uh, I think last year our FAFSA numbers might have been 20%. I think right now they're 66%, uh, which, is, which is fourth in our um, network, which when you understand we've got Northside up there, we've got Lane up there. And then we've got Vaughn, and Vaughn has a smaller population, so I kind of don't count them. But right now, we're like third out of the biggest school, so the counselors are doing it. So thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's the sheet. I think of you. Thanks very much. All right. It's like we've got the state of the school report next. Yeah, and and I'm and I apologize to everybody. I'm not going to do the state of the school this month. Um, I used to do it in May all the time at the end of the year because then we have a full year. Um, the network wanted us to do it earlier. They were pushing for December, but with this hallway initiative, um, I just found it it's it's not a good time for me to do that. I also want to get the this is the first time ever we're going to end the semester at the winter break, and so I want to do it in February because I'll have data for the first semester and I can compare that to the data of last year. So I'm gonna have it in February. Also, we had it last year and I had each of the assistant principals have a couple of slides because they are the experts on their, on the, their departments. Like I say, I hired great people and I get out of their way. And so that's what we're gonna do in February. So I'm gonna move the state of school to February where we have more concrete data uh, and, and a little bit more substance. All right. Student spotlight, um, I won't, um, we don't have a student spotlight, but I encourage everybody to go on our website, and there is a nice video up there. Last Wednesday, uh, we were asked, Susanna Mendoza, our controller, um, invited us. She's invited, we've done it now eight years at, and I think we've been invited the last six years. After they invited us, they never invited any other school to go there. We bring our band and we bring our choir to Our Lady of Angels um, downtown. I think that was the place where they had that fire many, many years ago, if anybody remembers. But uh, And they have a nice luncheon for all of the um, uh, senior citizens. I think Mary was there a couple of years ago. So the band was there, the choir was there, and um, we had Mr. T there. So he was the big thing. And so they sang a song with Mr. T. Um, it's on our it's on our website. You better watch out. You better not pout. You better not cry. I'm telling you why. Mr. T is coming to town, and he <laughs> sang with them. So please please watch it, and that's going to be our student spotlight. They they were stars of of that show. So that's my student spotlight, and and they made us proud. So um, budget. I'll go over quickly. If everybody opens their packets, I'm going to go to the LSC budget report, which is kind of this white one here. And we have a couple of budget um, requests. The first one is a $25,000 compass transportation. That's our normal cost of doing business. It's going to be anywhere from $18,000 to maybe $30,000 sometimes in the in the springtime. We have a lot of sports um, 
and 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 and, and I also want to emphasize on this too that you know people like are coming up to say, Mark, why is that so? Why is that a lot? Don't, don't forget that we are paying for the buses that go in between the campuses. Okay, so that's an added expense. But also, uh, when I came here nine years ago, I said let's let's branch out and let's start playing tougher competition because when you play tougher competition, you're gonna be you're gonna have better teams. Uh, it's just it's just the quality of the competition you play that makes you better. So some of this busing is not like we're just going to Steinmetz back and forth or send. We're going sometimes across the, you know the Illinois and we're playing some of these these suburban schools that are real good, but it costs a little bit money for buses. So that's why the expense is so much. Uh, BSN Sports is sixteen thousand four hundred. Those are for football uniforms. About every four years we get a different set of uniforms. Okay, four years ago we got our visiting uniforms and they last you know about five or six years. And then uh, this year we're looking for home uniforms. So we got $16,400 for our home uniforms. And I was told um, our uniforms are better than some colleges. And so, uh, which is good. I mean, I, I want, I, I've always said we might not win everything, but my, my teams are gonna look the best. Uh, the, we always have to ask uh, anytime there's a transfer of more than $10,000. So I need a transfer of $21,000. So those are for seven, Three thousand dollars stipends for our department chairs. Uh, in the in the old days, they used to get a, a period off, but we found out that it's it's it helps the school more if we can have them teach that, and then it lowers class size, and then we can pay each of the, uh, those department chairs a stipend of three thousand dollars twice a year. That's to twenty one thousand dollars because that's this semester stipend, and then the last one is forty eight thousand dollars for Compass Transportation. Mark, you just asked me for twenty five thousand. Why is it forty eight? And I had them put a little bit more money in there because I'm hoping that it could take care of our transportation in January so that we don't have to meet on a Wednesday night when everybody's uh, doing stuff and just to approve a $10,000 thing. So it's a little bit more in, the, in there. So any questions on the transfers or expenditures? So the second transfer is to cover buses? Yeah, it's all okay, okay. it's all I'm sorry I missed it when you said it earlier. I that's okay. That. Yeah, that's for the for that twenty five thousand. Then we got a little more money in the account. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, all right. Let's go through a, a December a report. As everybody knows, our first through eighth period uh, T bird hallway sweeps initiative started on November twenty eighth, and then we started the second phase of the T birds, and we had one hundred and five conferences with the teachers. Interesting enough, I, I've heard. Um, People say, well, these kids aren't coming to classes and they're still passing everything. And it, it's not true because now we have true data. We had 105 kids that last, that, and during that first week had over 18 tardies, okay? Um, could a kid get more than seven, seven tardies a day or eight tardies a day? Yes, because the tardies are only good for five minutes. Some of our kids are learning the game of, oh, I get a tardy slip and now I get to walk around and just flash this tardy slip and this is my little hallway pass. It's not because we're looking at it and saying, nope, this is 10 minutes, go get another one. So they can sometimes get 10 in a day, okay? These are our, these are our chronic walkers. But most kids are in class right now. I mean, when, when you look at the hallways from a month ago to today, it's a marketable difference. The, the thing that I keep telling everybody is that the camouflage is gone now. We're going to have perennial hall walkers. We know that. But now the, the camouflage of the kids that are taking their time going to class or going to lunch is gone because kids are actually scurrying to class. And now it makes it more evident who these hundred kids are that are not going to class so that we can identify them and not necessarily punish them, but give them the supports that they need. Why are you not going to class? Okay. So it, it, it is working. I do have... Um, I did want to show one quick video here. Uh, let me see if I have that here. So this is this is if you look at the clock here, I'm gonna zoom in on the clock. Right now it's almost 7.45 and you can see everybody walking in, okay? There, there's more of a hurry. If you, were to, if you were to see two minutes before this, you would see kids actually running to get into class. But I've been hearing that the kids can't get to school on time because there's a huge line. That's not the case. 
this is the line. The line stops right there by the two blue coats right there when the, when the clock ticks in one minute. Right now, those kids that just walked through there probably wouldn't get to class on time anyway. Because as soon as the bell rings, the teachers close the door and you have to get that slip. Again, our goal is to get them in the class by the time the bell rings. So I just wanted to tell everybody, I wanted to show everybody that. Because I think there's some people that say, well, they would get to class if they didn't have to wait in line. That's not the case. The line is not there until after the bell rings. And then it kind of backs up. It, before, it was backing up out the door because kids were just getting used to it. Now it's pretty much backing up maybe about 15 kids, and then they're slowly getting to class. We do have, we did have some problems with the scanning stations to begin with, but those are working up. We have some self-service scanning stations where the kids know where they're at, and they just scan their ID, and they take the slip. So it's working out. If you look in the next page, uh, I'll get to this in a second. These were the tardies um, that I wanted everybody to look at. Um, and so you can see by period how many that we had at the beginning and how many we have now. And so you can see it's an average of 34% decrease in the tardies. Okay, kids are getting to class on time. And like I tell kids, it's not the end of the world if you get a tardy. We get that. Okay, but most kids are actually getting to class on time which is important because a lot of people are like, my dad's getting tired of getting, getting these email messages, I'm getting to class. So I, I wanted to give you guys some real statistics. That's one of the reasons why we're running the hallway sweep, so we actually have hard data on this. And when I said that kids are walking the hallways and passing, that's not true. Of the 105 kids that we had identified with over 18, only four of them were passing all their classes. So out of 100 that we've identified, it's not that kids are walking and they're passing anything. They're not. Only four of them are. So only 4% are passing all their classes and still going to the, the, the late class, okay? Most of them have multiple Fs and multiple Bs. So that's one of the problems. That's why we, you know, we have the, the hallway sweeps is, is an MTSS Tier 1. Now we can go to MTSS Tier 2 and say, what's going on? Why can't you get to class? Why are you absent this many times? How come you can't get to class on time? As an example, I just met with a kid the other day that was not in class his first period 70 times. And I met with the parent, and she's like, Mr. G, I'm going to be real honest with you. It's a family issue right now. Grandma's got Alzheimer's, and I have to drop him off, and he has to stay home and stuff like that. And I said, is there any way you can do it? She goes, I can't do that right now. So. I said, so we're going to try to work something out so maybe he can take a night cut. We all, sometimes kids do have legitimate answers as to why they're not here. They're all not at Starbucks drinking coffee. Some kids do have answers, but we would not have been identified that child had we not had this data, and now we can kind of pick them out of the line. Um, let's see, we just, uh, secondly, or third, I wrapped up the EOS Equal Opportunity Schools student and survey staff. Mr. Uh, Flores and Ms. Greenblatt uh, ran that. And again, that's to get more of our kids into higher level classes, okay? And we hosted an EOS partner with district representatives. I believe they were from North Carolina. They were in the school. And then we filled out our 2022-2023 enrollment projection estimates. And right now, everybody that's been here a while, Mary Cobb has been here, we are leveling off. We're going to be at 4,300. We might be at 4350 one year, we might be at 4275, but we're going to be right in that number every year, which is going to make programming um, much, much more consistent than it has been over the years. I think Mary Ann Villa Senior is going to be happy on that, which she doesn't have to keep creating classes. All right, uh, second one, we were honored by CPS as one of the top five neighborhood schools with the highest growth rates in freshman on track, four year graduation rate, and five year graduation rate. Uh, made strides. As everybody knows, we have six um, assistant principals and myself, and we have to do reach evaluations for every teacher. A PAT, which is a, uh, a permanently assigned teacher, is somebody with under three or four years in the system. They have to have two formal interviews and an informal, where we have tenure teachers, um, like Bridget and Scott, would have one formal and one informal. And the informal can be done in, in in different years, but we're trying to get those done. So right now, a lot of them, we're right now, I, I know I did this about a week ago, right now I think we're at 33%. So it's a lot of work, but we're getting it done. But that's the, we're having good conversations with teachers. So uh, we had our TAF TCT leads and department chairs attend the third CPS ILT Institute. And then we had our hosted our first semester parent teacher conferences with about 1,500 different conferences. Big kudos goes out to the PPC. We made a really nice recommendation about having it uh, during the daytime uh, as a regular school day, 7.45 to 3. I think it worked out well. I think uh, not too many people were disappointed. The ones that could not make it, the teachers reached out and said, I, I know that you work, but we can still talk. So um, I think that was a good thing. 
uh, climbing culture. I think I had that on last year. JV Soccer won the city championship. Um, we in our IB Diploma Department host IB information sessions. First round of our MYP uh, personal projects <laughs> were completed. And then we hosted numerous parent teacher conferences for MTSS level two and level three supports. That's not, not just the counselors, that's myself meeting. Sometimes I'll meet with a student, the counselor, um, their caseworker, um, the deans, and we'll go over and on my board in there, we'll show them their, their transcripts, their report cards. Right now, uh, um, some of our students, and I'm, I'm, I'm mostly getting maybe one a day right now in the past three weeks are transferring out just because they, they see that um, they might go to ombudsman. It's like, you know what, I gotta go over there and make up some credits right now because I'm, I'm not doing it here. And so it's, it's a good viable option. And, and every year around uh, April or May, I'll have kids transfer back in from ombudsman where they went and they, and they did what they had to do and they'll transfer it and they can walk our stage. But the, I think for some of our students to be in the school for seven hours is too tempting for them to walk around with their friends so when you go to ombudsman it's a four-hour session where you're sitting at a computer and you got nothing else to do to make up your credits it's good for them and they can make up their credits so um and i honestly i'll be honest with you i think this hallway sweeps is making the hallways not fun for these kids anymore and they're like i, I don't i don't like this anymore I, I i i need to do something else and so that's okay well, i'd like you to go to class but if not then we're, we're going to do something else that you can help you out with um, we're fully staffed on our conflict resolution specialists. Thank you very much. We've got two at the uh, Freshman Academy. Now we've got three here. Um, searching for an AP for Ms. Hess. Ms. Hess is going to have a, a little baby. And um, we're looking for an AP. She's going out, I think, in March. But I'm looking to maybe get an AP uh, temp for her in February to kind of learn from her and then, and then move on. And then we, um, we're, we are we completed interviews. We did hire a climate and culture person who was the old cat who was the old addison and it's dr Bar barrett i think um i'm trying to call her she has not returned and she's going to accept the job because i just talked to her yesterday but um we just had to do a preliminary call her references she's going to be really good she's a special ed teacher right now here uh and, and she's a doctorate just received her doctorate and she's really looking forward to her and as you can see i'm interviewing for scants and ins teachers um, it's supposed to be science, but um, actually we don't need a science teacher right now. That was a misprint. I got a, a, a uh, resignation uh, from one of our science teachers who's going to retire, uh, and it originally said January 9th, and they emailed me and said, no, 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 it's June 9th. It's June 9th. It was a mistake, so I thought I had the interview right away, so that's good. Um, and then dates to remember, semester one ends finally for the first time. I, I, I think in, in CPS's history, I think we're ending the first semester before the winter break, which is wonderful. Semester two begins on January 3rd. Am I right on that third? I got that wrong last time, didn't I? When are we coming back from break? Ninth. Okay, I got it wrong. I didn't change it yet. January 9th, an extra week for everybody. Our parent-teacher conferences again. And then a big one I just found out is um, on Arbor Day, uh, the uh, Commissioner of Streets and Sanitation, Alderman Napolitano, um, I, I make it a, I've made no bones about it. I really want to make our campus here look like a bowl of Fruit Loops in the fall. So I've been looking for people to give us trees. And so uh, the city is going to donate us 38 trees here uh, on Arbor Day. They're going to come out and plant them, which we've got spots all around the campus, which, which you know, um, is going to be wonderful in 20 years from now. It's just going to be, it's going to be a beautiful campus, not that it hasn't, isn't already. So that's what we have. Any questions on this at all? No? All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And I wish everybody happy holidays. I have one more thing I wanted to say, Paul, real quick, is I wanted to welcome Ms. Miner, who's our new student representative of this DI. Hey, hey. Thank you. Um, I'm going to motion to approve, make those budget approvals. Do we need a motion for that? Or what we got? Um, all right. I'll motion to approve the budget transfers as Detailed by Principal Grishaber. I'll second. All right. Um, I'm going to do roll call, okay? Ms. Miner? For, uh, you can vote yes or no, or you can abstain from this. Wait. Do kids do, do the. Do the I don't think do budget? Do budget. They I don't, don't do budget? budget. I apologize. My fault. <coughs> abstain. Yes. You, sure. Yeah. I recommend abstaining. Ms. Carode? Uh, I approve. 
Mr. Gorder. True. Ms. Cab. Yes. Ms. Diaz. Yes. Mr. Grishaber. Yes. Myself. Yes. Uh, Ms. Dorothy Trebbing. Yes. Mr. Plunser. Yes. Ms. Bowie. Yes. Bowie. yes. <laughs> Ms. Batcher. You there? Margie? Sorry, that was a yes. All right, thank you. All right, what's next? Um, in the chair report, I've got listed on the agenda, principal evaluation process. We should just start thinking about how we'd like to do it. Um, I've been a, a part of some evaluations that were done in regular LSC meetings, like afterwards, um, when we could go into closed session without interrupting anything else. I've been a part of ones where we did them, uh, we selected other days. I'd recommend trying to do it after a regular meeting, although these days, you know, with all the meetings before this can be kind of long. So I wanted to throw it out there for anyone with opinions or suggestions. Like I said, I'd recommend we just stick with doing it after our regular meeting in a closed session. Is anyone necessarily opposed to that? No. Okay, thanks. That's all. Um, we'll plan on getting started on that uh, in, the, in the next meeting, coming up with some with stuff that we want to talk about, and then uh, the, the process we'll use for voting, okay? okay. All right, thank you. Paul, real quick, I had three more things I wanted to add on that came late. I know a lot of our teachers are going for national board certification. Some of them are getting notified. Um, Elliot Velasquez came to me and he's a brand new national board certified. I don't know the rest of them because they're coming in piecemeal. And so I don't know who got it and who didn't. And also Miss Wagner was renewed for national board. Mr. Cohen has something for uh, Mr. Ms. Pyle to read that he's going to do that. Our uh, Taft NJROTC uh, competed in um, some uh, drill meets and stuff like that. And out of 25 schools, they finished third. That's our NJROTC. And finally, our robotics team, our fifth through eighth robotics team competed um, and uh, they finished first. Uh, as usual, and um, and they were they were uh, mentored. Well, it was let me just name the students: Leonardo Aguila, Aguila, eighth grade, and Ashani Day, eighth grade. This would all be happen would would not be happening if the mentors at the varsity campus, Veronica Gromack, Anamosa, Terrace Grinshin, uh, Ibrahim uh, Moparaka. Sorry about the, the names. Um, and so, congratulations to the robotics team. We're really starting to have a dynasty. Yeah. And Princess will read about our debate dynasty team in a second. So, so. I'll add, Mr. Grishaver, that um, Ellie Taylor and Vanessa Munoz also became nationally board certified. They did, huh? Oh, okay. Nice well, job. Hey, who, who Ellie Taylor and Ellie Taylor and Vanessa Munoz. Very nice. Yeah. Our goal is right now, so that would make it 23 here. Um, and, and my goal is to have 50 by 2025. So we're, we're halfway there. Very good. All right, committee chair reports. Um, anything from budget? Nothing to report. All right, PPLC. Um, PPLC met yesterday. Um, we followed up on a previous recommendation to create and staff a reflection room for students who have been referred by teachers. The reflection room is a space that focuses on personal improvement, accountability, social emotional learning support and academic tutoring support. We recommend that this could be a space to incorporate peer tutoring as well. Um, we recommended that staff are actively involved in discussions of the current Taft rating policy and decisions about changes to the policy prior to the next school year. We recommended that these discussions are focused on the complex relationship between equity and student accountability. You want three? Sure. Uh, we shared and discussed ideas on how to continue to address student tardiness, uh, which Mr. Grishaber was just talking about, hallway behaviors, and especially door security. Um, yeah, that's what we met about. I'm here for any questions. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you. Uh, facilities committee, any updates? Uh, it's not a starting to work on it. Intercom system we started, so started ball rolling. Thanks, Dean. Thank you. Uh, the BAC. 
nothing at this time. All right, safety and security committee. Were there any updates for that? No, uh, the only thing is we did hire the uh, climate and culture. Uh, we had four openings for uh, safe, for security officers. We filled two, but then two resigned. So we're back to four again. So All right. We'll get them in here. Uh, the student voice committee. Uh, there are a couple of questions for that. So uh, first thing, we did um, meet with the Muslim Association, and we did find a prayer room, and there was an email sent out about it earlier this week. Um, so that's available for all students during the time that we need to pray. Um, we're also starting to explore the idea of getting an addiction support group for um, students in school and staff to really like get support, maybe like fighting their addictions with like different substances. And uh, we're starting within the SBC to form different committees and stuff, so we're able to reach out to more uh, groups and like more diverse groups of staff and stuff like that, so they can have all of their issues. Um, Represented and the SBC, and oh, also, I have a question. Do you for the SBC, do you want us to provide written reports to you guys, or are these verbal reports like good? I um, do you have a preference? No, I don't care either way. If you guys want to give us more, like, yeah, and stuff like that, I can send you notes or something before or after meetings, but if these are. If, like these conversations are also good, I'm fine with this. I'm fine with the verbal reports. I wouldn't want to add to any any extra work to what you got going on. Um, so I'm fine with it. Thank you. Can I ask where is the uh, Muslim prayer room? Yeah, is it in the council? Kind of next to where Penny it usually is okay. at the corner okay. office right now. And then from 12 o'clock until 1 every day. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh. okay. Very nice. Because there's different time they do it after school, the room 234. Mm -hmm. So it's always yeah. yeah. I mean, people watch. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, your, oh, so, to your question about submitting the information, either verbally or written, um, you can, I think verbal is good, but also if it, if you think it requires something written, that's entirely up to you. You can, you can make that change or decision if you'd like. Mm -hmm. All right. If, okay. you, if you send your written to me, I'll print it up and make sure it's part of the packet that everybody gets. Okay. Right. Sure. Thank you. Uh, the student representative report. Good evening, everyone. So I'm going to start off with what Mr. Coleman sent to me. Um, he competed at the Chicago Debate League All Conference Tournament this past weekend at Big South. The team had a winning overall record against the toughest set of opponents we faced this year. And one there, Anna Jarrett, Chatty, sorry if I missed my name, and Krista Larioso defeated teams from Whitney Young, Lane Tech, and Kenwood, and Whitney Young again. Before <laughs> talking a razor thin judges' decision in the quarterfinal round. Individually, Casper Borges was the tournament's number 24 overall debater in a field of nearly 200 in the and also received special mention from the league during the award ceremony for the sportsmanship. Thank you all for allowing us to attend the tournament from the varsity campus of the team, and special thanks to Mr. Ruffins for his support, the coordinating leaders on very short notice from Mr. Cohen, Ms. Abigail Polsarak, and the top of the coaches. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Princess, who's the, who's the team we beat twice? Who said twice? <laughs> 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 oh, <that's wonderful. laughs> um, on another note, the SBC is starting to collaborate with the Black Student Union to um, promote the different ethnicities in the school. So my idea was kind of like to have like bracelets with the colors of the like countries that people are from. Like for example, like Polish, they're Black's colors are red and white, so the bracelet would be red and white. I feel like that's just like a nice way to show that they're like here for and that we notice that they're here in this community. I'm not sure how we would find out like all the ethnicities in the school. Um, I don't know who would ask about that, but it's kind of like an idea that we're starting to have. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is that the website is updating with the LSE reps like Natalia. And I think there was someone else that was the LSC rep. Do you guys know who that is? Like there was a form sent out? Yeah, yeah Chase, right? Yeah, and we were also hoping to get like more 
more um, advertisement about the LSD, like more posters around the hallways probably, and maybe more um, like tweets about it or something like that. So people know that it's happening. I'm pretty sure like a lot of people don't even know that the LSD exists, and we really see more people in the audience watching and learning more about the school. And lastly, this is kind of a personal fun, um, personal announcement, but I am a posse scholar now. Thank you. Congratulations. I never had it. Can I just mention something that for the posters for the LSC, they only gave us those in the beginning of January when they're going to go ahead and do the election, and they give us they give us those uh, posters, for instance, from January to when um, the election takes place, and then after that, they're like, okay, just take them down. Or I could always ask them, can we just leave them there because once the position is taken, then we'll answer, like why are we advertising? Well, uh, it would be nice to be able to like show up and oh see yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think we could have a poster, I mean, maybe a board or something, yeah. like like um to show what's going on or making available. That's a wonderful. I put it out to the LSC. We did do it about five years ago. We we did have one meeting a year that was about it happened at three thirty or four o'clock, so that kids could come right after school. I know you all have lives too, and maybe you can't do that, but it, it was well attended by a lot of classes, and a lot of classes were giving them, you know, kudos. Like if you go to this, it'd be really important. So I just put that out there. No voters needed, obviously, but that's something else. That, it's, it's a long time for a lot of our kids to be here today. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, I'd like to entertain something like that in the future. Um, so maybe in the new year we can talk about a good date for to change the time of the meeting. Yeah, one meeting, like in the spring, kids can stick around. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, Friends of Taft. No report. Okay. Um, the old business. I'm going to skip on, and we'll. Maybe you'd bring it up at the next meeting. Uh, any new business? No new business? Was there? I have a question. Are we, um, are we still waiting for a student rep, or do we have everybody now? So uh, they, we... they just held the election for okay. the third student rep. That was, that was successful. They, so we do have a third student rep. Um, but it's like at this point, there's a it's procedural where they picked them, but now that student rep has to be officially installed by the Board of Education. That's his name. His name is Chase Tran. Thank you. Does that mean that they would start February then or March? When February. 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 Mm -hmm. I think so. Thank you. All right. Is there any public participation? Okay, um, motion to adjourn. Second. Anyone, uh, all in favor? Aye. All right, aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? <laughs> I'll put you down. Yeah. <laughs> you did good, Natalia. <laughs> 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 <laughs>